this is Property Lecture 7, Milliken versus the United States. It's a 1931 case, and basically we were talking about uh, gifts in this particular case. That's why this is in your uh, materials. If you look in the, uh, in the outline, you'll see it's listed under gifts. This is a U.S. Supreme Court case, and uh, basically what we're talking about is recovery of a particular tax and uh, involves the taxation statutes. And what you do is when you get a case like this, especially a tax case, you want to skim it over. Give it a, a general overview, as I mentioned earlier, just to get a sense of what they're talking about. You, you understand it's a tax case. You, you see a phrase like contemplation of death. Uh, you talk about uh, underlying the present statutes, the policy. A word like policy is always very important. You skim the case, you look it over, give it a, a decent read, uh, look to see what the court is talking about by looking at the end. Sometimes you can look at the end, see what the court is talking about here and its rationale, and give you the sense of what this case is about. Now in this case, the court's rationale is the decedent, when he made his gift, was w as well warned that it might be taxed on that basis as he was, that it would be so taxed if on that day he had made the same dis disposition of it by will. So now you're already, you're just starting the case, but you already have a sense of what the case is about. This is a dispute by uh, someone who's uh, being taxed on money or a gift or some sort, sort of uh, financial benefit uh, as a result of someone else's death. And there's a, you know, a discussion about the tax code here. So you go through the case, you look at the case, and contemplation of death. This is a case that was uh, deciding whether or not a particular gift was made in contemplation of death. It talks about the term inter vivos. An inter vivos transaction is something that's done uh, between living people. So the question is whether or not an inter vivos transaction is in contemplation of death. So that begs the question, what is contemplation of death? And uh, the court uh, looks at uh, the various uh, statutes and uh, it determines that uh, this particular situation involved uh, someone who is uh, contemplating death. Um, the words in the contemplation of death do not refer to the general expectation of death which all persons entertain. A transfer, however, is made in contemplation of death wherever the person making it is influenced to do so by such an expectation of death arising from bodily or mental conditions as prompts persons to dispose of their property to those whom they deem proper objects of their bounty. So that's a definition of contemplation of death that's important to the outcome of this case. And the court talks about you know, the policy considerations of these kinds of things. Underlying the present statute is the policy of taxing such gifts equally with testamentary dispositions. Okay, I'll repeat that. Underlying the present statute is the policy of taxing such gifts equally with testamentary dispositions. In other words, something that you give by will, for which they may be substituted, and the prevention of the evasion of estate taxes by gifts made before, but in contemplation of death. It is thus an enactment in aid of and an integral part of the legislative scheme of taxation and transfers at death. And uh, there's also something called assumption of risk that you will find very often in, in many cases uh, involving different areas of the law. And uh, there's an implied assumption of risk kind of statement that the court makes in this case. The court states that uh, uh, not only was the decedent left in no uncertainty that the gift he was then making was subject to the provisions of the existing statute, but in view of its well understood purpose, statute's understood purpose, he should be regarded as taking his chances of any increase in the tax burden which might result from carrying out the established policy of taxation under which substitutes of testamentary gifts were classed and taxed with them. So the court is uh, identifying some very important policy issues uh, that, are, that come into play in this particular uh, decision. And uh, it's, 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 it's worth a, a, a full read here because uh, it's, it's a, an important case. It talks about the different policy issues. It talks about uh, various aspects of, of property law concerning gifts. Uh, it, it touches uh, very generally on the law of dispositions by will, uh, which is a, a very important subject we will be discussing and uh, addressing in law school. So I advise you to, to read it carefully and to ask yourself you know, some fundamental questions about how the court reaches this decision.